I'm Johnny. This is Johnny Likes, the show where I talk about movies that I like. Today I'm going to talk about a documentary series about horror movies from the 1980s. Today, Johnny Likes, In Search of Darkness. Return of the Living Dead, Day of the Dead, Poltergeist, American Werewolf in London, Monster Squad, The Fly, Hellraiser, The Changeling, Reanimator, Sleepaway Camp, Pumpkinhead, and Friday the 13th Part 4. In Search of Darkness is a three-part documentary film starring a whole bunch of Hollywood insiders and a bunch of talking heads in and around the industry. It was All three were written and directed by David A. Weiner. Weiner? I'm not sure how he says his last name. Uh, these films are a love letter to the horror movies of the 1980s. The films cover the decades, starting at 1980 and going along year by year. They discuss notable films from each year. The format is typically something like this. They have a collage of movie posters, and then they slowly zoom in onto one. They then show a clip or a trailer from that film, and then they have the filmmakers and horror fans talk about the film. What it was like to film it, what it was like acting in it, what it meant to them, the first time they watched it, audience reaction, just general talk about the film. They have lots of candid behind the scenes footage as well as still photographs, which is really interesting to see. It also adds a lot of insight when it comes to how the special effects were done, as you get people partially in makeup or effects being halfway done, or you get to see from a different angle. Another aspect I found fascinating was hearing filmmakers who weren't involved in the film having their take an opinion on other movies. For instance, Joe Dante talking about Motel Hell. If you want to go to something that really catches the spirit of the 80s, don't look any further. Also, what a great title. I also often forget that filmmakers are first and foremost fans, so it's always cool to hear them talking about other stuff, or perhaps stuff that inspired them. Like, Sean Cunningham saying how Friday the 13th was this supposed to be a Halloween rough off a quick cash grab. What we were trying to do is come up with a credible movie that would run 90 minutes and have sound and, and words coming out of people's mouths at the right time and hope that it worked out okay. That was our entire ambition. Apart from talking about films of the year, they also add broad sociological topics that the interview subjects can discuss and add their two cents about and add their two cents in on about. Uh, topics range from things such as violence in cinema to special effects to the rise of home video, just to name a few. I thought they had a pretty good mix of people to interview, from the people actually involved in the films to those who just are involved tangentially or in meta contexts such as reviewers, YouTube people, you know. Eh, eh. So they had Hollywood directors, actors, writers, producers, uh, people involved in Fangoria magazine, which is like adjacent to the horror business, while also being kind of part of it. Plus uh, hosts of radio and YouTube shows kind of dedicated to horror and or classic film. I didn't care for all the interview subjects. A few of them kind of reminded me a little bit too much of like FM radio DJs. But overall, I did still like hearing what everyone had to say. It's also notable that some of the people featured have since passed on, and this, these may have been their last on-screen interviews in some cases. So that was just a little interesting factoid. These documentaries introduced me to a ton of horror films that I had never heard of before. I considered myself fairly well-versed in 1980s horror movies. Apparently my knowledge was predominantly pedestrian. There were so many more horror films produced and released in the 1980s than I, in my wildest dreams, even thought was possible. I've seen maybe a couple hundred, I think that's being pretty generous, and there's easily thousands of them out there. I should mention that there are three of these In Search of Darkness entries. There's part one, two, and three. I should also mention that these are not short movies. Parts one and two are about four and a half hours long, and the uh, part three is about five and a half hours long. I would love to see one 15 hour long monster movie. I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs>
Despite the length, only the third entry felt a little bit long to me. And I think that's mostly because they discussed a lot of what I would call bad, bad movies. Like movies that... There's some movies that are so bad that they're good. You've heard of that. Well, these these are just so bad that they're just really bad. Not all of them, but there's enough in there that I'm aware of that, yeah, they don't really merit much discussion. So the third film did have a little bit of bottom of the barrel, uh, going back to the well a little bit too often, going for it. But the third one also discussed horror films from around the world. And I found that fascinating as I... As much as I thought I knew about horror movies in the 80s, I would admit freely to knowing nothing about like Chinese or Korean horror movies from the 80s. And they featured a bunch of them and they seemed quite interesting. It was refreshing to have a not so North American or English speaking Europe centric movies mentioned. Another interesting point about these documentaries is I believe that they were at least partially crowdfunded, which just goes to show that you don't necessarily need the backing of big Hollywood studios in order to get movies made. Correct me if I'm wrong about the crowdfunding, but I'm fairly certain that's what happened. So these are well put together pictures, which try to cover as much ground as possible, while at the same time remaining accessible and interesting to the viewer. There are two types of people out there. There's those who, when they hear that there's a four and a half hour documentary on 1980s horror, they look something like this. <laughs> and then there's the other type who looks something like this. Mm -mm. Uh, well, fear not, second type. These movies don't have to be watched all at once. They don't have to be watched in order. You can come and go, you can rewind, you can fast forward, and you'll still have a pleasant experience. For the first type, yeah, it's, it's exactly as good as it sounds. I found the content fascinating for the most part. Some of the films I, I of course, wish they had talked more about and maybe gone a little bit deeper on. Other films I wish they'd talked less about. And some uh, they didn't even mention at all. That was one thing that bugged me a little bit, was the, the collage thing I mentioned earlier where they zoom in around, on a movie poster. They didn't even talk about all the movies that they had in the collages. I think they should have talked about those. Just a little thing that bugged me, that's all. But with so many films to cover and only so much time, I can understand how not everything could make the cut. Such is the nature of a project like this. So if you're a 1980s horror fan or just a horror fan in general, I would strongly recommend giving these films a shot. You will most likely learn a thing or two and at the very least find it interesting. If you're just a casual fan or you don't like horror movies, I'm not sure how much crossover appeal that these will have for you. So the target audience for these is obviously horror movie fans of a certain age. And they, they definitely lean into the nostalgia, but that's fine with me. Overall, I'm going to rate this a 4 out of 5. I enjoyed the first two entries a little bit more, mostly because a lot of the source material I was already familiar with. I understood the references that they were making for the most part. Whereas the lower budget, more obscure movies, some of them looked fascinating to me, others looked... Not so fascinating, let's say. But when you've got that much topic to cover, that's bound to happen. It's very understandable. I had a great time overall. There's bound to be something here for all the horror... F something for every horror fan. So if you like these, other stuff you might like would be... That guy who was in that thing. It's a documentary about character actors. You might also like Electric Boogaloo. The Wild Untold Story of Canon, which is about Canon Films. They're, it, it's fascinating. Check it out. You'll love it. And the other one would be In Search of Tomorrow. Same filmmaker, same style. This, the focus is on science fiction movies from the 1980s. Okay, questions if you guys have seen these films. What movie do you wish they had talked about that they missed? Uh, who was the most annoying interview subject? Which film got too much time? If you could let me know in the comments. Sweet. If you could also do me a favor and like and subscribe. It's quick, free, and relatively painless. 
plus it really helps me out. Thanks for watching me rant about movies for a little bit, and you can tune in next time to see what else Johnny likes. Give me a hand, Bill. A lot of my friends were actually kind of embarrassed for me when I showed them society. I thought it was great.